Hi guys, and welcome back to the CBT Nuggets video skill on Pester Infrastructure Monitoring using the Pester PowerShell module, of course. Again, if you'd like to follow along, head over to github.com slash cbttrevor. There should be a repository there that's publicly accessible without having to log in or anything called Pester Infrastructure Testing. And this is gonna be video number four in this particular skill. So what we're gonna do at this point, now that we've covered kind of the basic test structure for Pester tests, as well as how to configure Pester using the Pester preference variable that we looked at in the previous video, now we're actually going to write a practical test in PowerShell using the Pester module. So what we're gonna do is write a simple ping test. We're going to ping a default gateway, and then we'll ping a well-known IPv4 DNS server on the internet. There's Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 server. Also, Google has a quad eights, 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4, both of which are public DNS servers that we can ping. And so basically that's just going to give us verification that we can number one, hit our local default gateway so that we can route out to the internet. We could also optionally ping some of the intermediary hops between our default gateway and other nodes on the internet. We're not gonna get too much into that because that's a little bit more advanced, but we wanna basically just make sure that we can hit that default gateway. And then assuming we can hit the default gateway, there's a good chance we can get out to the internet. So we'll go ahead and just ping one of those public DNS servers. Now, PowerShell has a built-in command called the test connection command. And this is how you can perform a very simple ping test. In fact, if I were to fire up the Microsoft Windows terminal here and run PowerShell core 7.1.0, which again is the cross-platform version of PowerShell, I can do help on the test connection command. And sure enough, you can see we have the target name. We can ping more than one address if we wanted to at the same time. We can also specify the count parameter, which allows us to specify how many pings we want to send. We can also add a delay in there if we wanted to do multiple pings and put a delay. We can also do IPv6 addresses optionally if we wanted to. And we can also customize the timeout. So by default, the timeout is several seconds, but if your router is supposed to be responding and maybe you know, less than five milliseconds, you can actually set that timeout seconds to one instead of its default value. And you can actually speed up your tests if that test were to fail and actually hit that timeout. You'd only have to wait one second instead of waiting maybe three to five seconds for it to time out. So what we're gonna do is just run the test connection command. And if I do the dash ping parameter, that's indicating we want to do an ICMP request. And then we're also going to use IPv4. And then we're going to tack on the count parameter. So we'll specify that we only want a single ping. And then we'll add on the target name parameter, which is the target device that we want to actually ping. So if I type 10.0.0.1, that's my default gateway address on my local network. And as you can see, we have successfully pinged it. We have a few different useful properties here. So number one, we have the status property and it says success here but I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that it's not actually a string value. So if I was to rerun this command and pipe the result into get member, you can actually see that the status property is not a string. It's actually a .NET enumeration value on the enumeration in the system.net.network information namespace under the IP status. That's the name of the enumeration. <clears throat> so you can actually see the different values of that enumeration if you tab complete IP status here, and then pipe the enumeration itself into get member. And then make sure that you add the dash static parameter on there as well, because all of the enumeration values are considered static properties of the enumeration itself. <clears throat> so as you can see, all, all of these properties here, these are all the different potential status code responses that we could get. So success is actually a enumeration value. It's, it's just being interpreted by PowerShell as a string. So just be aware of that as you're working with the test connection command. Also, we have the latency here, which is particularly useful. We wanna make sure that our latency is perhaps below maybe 10 milliseconds or below five milliseconds or something like that, especially if it's on our local network, depending on whether you're on Wi-Fi or not. Of course, that would affect it as well. 
and the latency is a long value, so it's a numeric value, we should be able to cast that to an integer and then perform an integer comparison on that. We also have the target address, the buffer size, and things like that. But mainly what we're interested in are the status and the latency. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually write a pester test that performs a ping test and gives us the results. So what we're going to do is start with a describe block here. And you can name the describe block whatever you want to. It's basically just a test suite for you to categorize your tests under. And then we can also add a context block very similar to the describe block. And this just gives us another layer to categorize our tests on. So I'm going to add a context here that is called ping tests, because maybe we want to have you know, DNS tests be separate in a separate context. Maybe we have web endpoint tests that we want to perform, like HTTP endpoint requests, and we can categorize those separately. So inside of the fixture prop parameter for the context, I'll go ahead and just move my assertions into that context block. So I have two different assertions here. So the first assertion is should ping default gateway. So that should be able to ping my local router. I'm going to ping it one time because the default is to actually ping four times. So if I just do test connection using the shorthand approach, you can see that it actually runs four ping commands instead of just one. So I only want it to ping once because I want to grab the latency. And I want to say the latency should be less than 5. Or if I look at the results over here, maybe I should say something like less than 50 since I'm on a wireless interface. And so what I'm doing is, if you recall, that latency property is a long, which is a 64-bit value. I'm just casting that out to an integer, a standard 32-bit integer. And then I'm piping that into the should statement. And I'm basically saying it should be less than a certain amount. So I'll change that to 50 for now. If I was on a wired network, it would probably be like less than 2 milliseconds. But I'm not at the moment. And then I also have a second test here. So basically, there is an IP address on my network that I know should not exist. So in some ways, you could actually use this as a security monitoring tool. So if a device plugs into your network that's unfamiliar to you, and it gets an IP address from a DHCP server on your network, you can run these pester tests and say, hey, I know this IP address should not be responding to ICMP requests. And you can use that as a signal that something is wrong on your network that needs to be corrected. So basically, I'm going to very similarly test the status of the 10.0.0.77 IP address. We're going to test it one time. And we're also going to reduce that timeout period to one second so that we can speed up our tests because we're actually expecting this basically to fail. So if I was to take a look at the status property here, you would see that we get back a result of timed out. Again, that's a .NET enumeration value. It's not actually a string. However, using PowerShell's explicit casting support, you can explicitly cast that value to a string. And so if you were to run that, you should actually just get the string timed out. So therefore, we can now use that string and compare it to a string that just says timed out. So we're expecting it to time out in this case. So I'm just going to save this file and hit F5. And as you can see, because we have the detailed output view using our pester preference variable that we looked at earlier enabled, we have the describe block here, which is home lab. We have a context called ping tests. So it's kind of a category again of tests. And then it actually breaks down the individual tests and how long they took to execute here on their own independent lines. And so I can see the summary down here at the bottom saying that two tests passed. And I can see up here specifically what the names of the tests were and what the test status was. Now, what would it look like if one of these tests were to fail instead of succeed? So let me change this should be less than 50 down to should be less than maybe 3 milliseconds, because I'm reasonably certain that I'll ping above 3 milliseconds to my default gateway on my wireless interface. So if I hit F5 to rerun this, now you can see an example of what it looks like when a test actually fails. So as you can see, we still have the describe block here, we have the context block, and then our first test has a negative sign next to it, and Pester has printed out the results in red instead of in the default purple here which is just due to my theme colors here. But you can see that a succeeding test has a little plus sign next to it. A failed test has a negative next to it. 
and we can again see the summary down here where we now have one passing test and one failing test. So that's just how you can use PowerShell with its built-in test net connection command to perform some assertions about the latency as well as the up or down status of a particular IP address on your home network. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.